trailer, multimedia, indie, the future, teaser trailer, live action, movie, fixed incomes, blockbuster, sonic, syndicated experience, galaxy queen, flash in the pan, connectedness, monetized, celebrities and normies, star lord, synergize, genetic engineering, four dimensions, social and moral repercussions, singularity. Hello and welcome uh, to Premature Evaluators, where we watch only the movie trailers and review the entire movie based on said trailer for both movies we're really excited about, as well as ones that we aren't so excited about. We make predictions, observations about the plots and characters and endings, as well as whatever else I am Stu. <laughs> I'm Eli. I'm a very hesitant Avery. And uh, we got a great show for everyone today. <laughs> Based on that intro, it's going to be a 14-hour show. <laughs> I can feel their excitement for whatever else they're doing while they're listening to this podcast. Just, um, just I'm making a commitment to you guys right now. Um, a lot of times I tend to uh, get inside my head uh, and do hilarious comedy bits, but then I kind of lose the... I'm not present in the moment. Mm. I just really want to be present in the moment tonight. I don't think anyone would have ever thought that about you, Stu. Yeah. So, just, if you guys see me, like, drifting off, thinking of incredible one-liners to insert, <laughs> just stop me and just say, Stu, or you say, Avery, hold on a second, if Avery's speaking, and then right. you say, and then you can say, okay. So is and that, then, the one-liners are when you get the glazed over look in your eyes and start drooling just a yes. little bit? Okay. If you see that happening, just snap me out of it okay. and say, can you join us back in the present? And is there any reason we haven't heard any of these hilarious one-liners? Do you have like another podcast? I think they're all internal dialogue. Is okay, so he's... <laughs> There's two voices just raucously Usually laughing. they are imme- they immediately follow the glazed over... Okay. Drooling. And then I just come up with this incredible one-liner. Okay. Well, I don't want to rob the audience of that experience. <laughs> so I'm faced well, with a tough decision. We're just going to try something different. We're going to try to really break up, break me out of my formula. And I'm going to be here in the moment with you guys. All right. Every second, every step of the way. They call that lucid. You're going to be lucid. Would you say you're going <laughs> to be, to be a, a straight 100% man? lucid. I don't know if I would... <laughs> say that I was straight. Okay, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. Yes. We're just going to feel it out. Um, let's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about the movies. Well, we, we have an uh, overall theme, too, that you should talk about before. We, we do, start. actually. Well, I was going to see if the listeners could guess the theme because okay. of these right, very popular these. movies. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> what do all these have in common? <laughs> Uh, there's a movie called Kite. It uh, came out in 2014. Uh, or it did come out, right? Yeah, it came out. It was direct to direct TV. And uh, Kite, that rhymes with trite. Coincidence? <laughs> so his, just for the record, his, his eyes did not glaze over. There was no drool, so that was no, just right here, yeah, right that, here in the moment. Yeah, just that, living every second of it. So, would explain a lot about that <laughs> tagline. <laughs> Reasonable doubt. Uh, let's take a step backwards, and let's. Uh, I realize my tagline is actually associated with uh, the person that this film stars. Oh, okay. uh, so the theme, t- <laughs> the theme tonight is actually Samuel L. Jackson movies. Good guesses, okay, everybody. Nice. Uh, you guys probably knew that because you Based read on the one movie. Not because you guessed, sure. but probably because you read the uh, podcast synopsis or whatever before you clicked on it. But what about our live audience? <laughs> <laughs> the chat room really isn't lighting up too well tonight. I don't, I don't know what their deal is. I'm, I'm very, not seeing anything very coming through on the phone lines. <laughs> it's a real lack of energy out there. It's disheartening. 
Reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt. <laughs> this will surely put his career through an unreasonable drought. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yes, sir. yeah, that was gold. Maybe, right. maybe we should start workshopping <laughs> your taglines before the podcast. Unreasonable drought. No, no, no! <laughs> like a I, famine. No, no. I, I got the joke. Just to clarify, it was it. <laughs> wasn't any confusion on my part. It isn't unreasonable. Okay, <laughs> the Samaritan. It's right there in the title. This isn't the good one. <laughs> okay. God. <laughs> so, I'm glad we made it through that little bit of uh, <laughs> fuck podcasting. Sorry magic. about that. Uh, that was cool. Dude, actually, I think it's untouched. Yeah, we're good. I just spilt water all over the table with the MacBook. You tried as hard as to get actually into the on MacBook ridges ports. That can hardly be described. Which which clearly interrupted your eyes blazing over. <laughs> if not, we would have some gold. I was just up. so in the moment. <laughs> so we get to record so the rest excited. of this with wet elbows. It's all <laughs> good. So we're actually doing uh, Samuel L. Jackson tonight, and we've done Nick Cage. So I feel like we're on a good roll for like our first two actor-based podcasts. Yeah, and... I, honestly, I think there's a lot of similarities between the two. Mm-hmm. Like some of them take amazing like like roles that are perfect for them and end up making like great movies. Mm-hmm. Where sometimes they actually carry the movie. Uh, other times they just put their name on the like bill. Absolutely, and it sells tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think both of them have this one thing in common where now it's like. Well, at least to me, when I hear Samuel L. or um, we won't say his name anymore, <laughs> uh, when I hear one of those two names, I think of a specific genre associated with their name. True. So it's almost like they've become a genre unto themselves. So like if I hear a Samuel L. movie, I'm like, he's going to say motherfucker a lot. He's going to be like kind of weird. Mm. Not- yeah, I th- Totally can see that. Well, oh, one of the one of the differences though, I think, is uh, Nick Cage. Yeah, it's like, oh, I have to star in this movie. I've only seen a few of them where he's just in it, sort of. That's true. As opposed to Samuel, who it doesn't seem to matter if he stars in it, if he's on a box of cereal at some point, and they show him, <laughs> they'll put title, they'll be like, and Samuel Jackson, but he'll hardly be in the movie whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. Great observation. <laughs> this is the worst. Can we have old student just glaze over? It? No, this is new and improved. No, it's not improved. It's new, possibly. It, it definitely is new. So, um, what, what order are we going to do these movies in? Uh, we're going to do Kite, Reasonable Doubt, and The Samaritan. Okay, cool. And also, we, we watched, like, when we did the Nick Cage episode, we watched... 18 trailers <laughs> and we Maybe reviewed more than that yeah 18 trailers yeah <laughs> it was we a long ass all. episode yeah so for this, this one was... yeah we watched a lot of trailers and we went through a lot of different movies but he started in so few of them it was really hard to pick them that were like well he's the... even even in the trailer a lot i think there's that and there there's also apparently we've seen a lot more samuel l movies that than too. we have nick That's cage true. so it kind of disqualified a lot of them from from the start so why is it? Are we saying that Samuel Jackson's a better actor than Nicolas Cage? I think I he think, just well, chooses... he's been in like Star Wars. He's been in a lot of nerd movies. True. So Steve hasn't seen Star cult Wars, but it's you know, <laughs> cult hits. Yeah. Yeah. No good cult following. Like Star Wars. Yeah. Well, what did not have a big cult following? Kite came out in 2014 so it actually it actually Give it a does couple have more years i mean no no so here so i'll read the synopsis real quick it okay. says uh when her cop father is killed a young woman tracks the murder with the apparent help of his ex-partner who specific yeah it's, it's pretty short to the point but it's based off of an anime and apparently the anime is very controversial. Mm. And, and, and all of this is derived from YouTube comments, which I feel is like writing your doctorate based <laughs> off Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of pissed off, like, teenagers. The matter was enough. in the basement that it didn't rate. stick to the source material. Mm. So I had to, like, sift through tons of comments, and mm. it was just like, this is nothing 
Well, there, like apparently there's some type of like. Well, they casted humans for the role, so that's that's, that's one a problem. departure. <laughs> well, there, somebody was like, "Is there going to be like child porn in the movie?" So there's a couple people that said that. I don't know what they're. I'm assuming it's referring to something in the anime. Well, <laughs> I mean, I haven't watched. Well, how it, old is the actress in this? I, I I don't know. Yeah. Well, you, is that my job too? I'm just. <laughs> I know. I just think you probably cross a line when you actually cast actual female teenagers into yeah. roles that just a pervy when, yeah, I didn't Japanese see, artist could draw. It's true. I didn't see who was cast as Tentacle, but <laughs> I'm sure they did a Samuel. good job. Samuel. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Obviously. The apparent Tentacle uh, police department here. It's just a Slash Tentacle boyfriend. With, with his voice. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. It does sound amazing. That sounds really good. So I think they should redo it. Some of the controversies surrounding the movie are various set scenes of some 30, 40, 50 year old dude having sex with what looks like a 12 year old. Okay. I can see why that didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I know Hollywood's was willing to do whatever they decide right now, but that wasn't one. Yeah, so there, there was a lot of people on YouTube talking about that. So I hadn't... I'm not opposed to anime. I just don't watch it because I have to read subtitles. <laughs> that too. It, it really like... I've heard there's really great stories. I think almost any type of popular art form like that, like specific genre or whatever you want to call it, mm. there's bound to be some gems and I've heard that there's great stuff. But every time I go to try and watch it, I'm like, I can't just sit here for two hours and read subtitles. Like, it's... What? I have to. I'm they, sorry, they do guys. have Actually, overdubs as well. If that's your only hold up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. But then it feels like I'm watching Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> you you might be. I feel like it's you should. Be. Could just be you just accidentally <laughs> watching Dragon Ball Z <laughs> over and over. You should reintroduce yourself to anime by watching <laughs> Kite and letting us know how it turned out. I'm looking at some of the scenes they cut. I can't imagine why they did. They look like perfectly reasonable scenes to have in a oh, movie. God. They probably should just... Well, I'm actually showing images to uh, the host. I think that we'll go ahead and post these on the website. No, we will not. <laughs> what is that? Okay. Yeah. All right. There's no tentacles, but let's just say Samuel would have had a very different role in this movie than he's probably used to playing. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the premise... And the premise seems a lot less complex than... <laughs> The anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, no, basically it the trailer dumb, makes dumb, it look like it. my father was a cop that fought drugs and was murdered, and now I have superpowers and I'm going to avenge his death. Yeah, that's, that's mm. a pretty good summary. But it's pretty accurate. I'm a 12 year old girl that will murder everyone. I'm a 12 year old girl version of the Punisher. And I mean, we've seen a couple of movies that became pretty big that are like. Very similar to this. Yeah, tons. Yeah. Maybe this was like the one that started it all. <laughs> but somebody was like, want to do like a PG-13 version of it or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Might be a good call in this case. So is, what was, is, it, the... is it actually like hentai? The is... thing? I have no idea. I can't it, imagine like, it's was... not some sort of porn though. I don't see, yeah, I don't see how that passes for like... Like, I don't think all anime is like I don't see that like coming that. on after, like, <laughs> Dragon Ball be. Z. Like. I mean, you haven't actually watched the anime. That could just be, like, fan-sourced, fan-fiction. No, I think that's uh, actually the... I mean, maybe that's what's up in Japan. You know, when we were younger, really we would, like, watch Saturday morning cartoons until MASH came on and you were done, right? <laughs> maybe this is, like, what they watched until MASH came on. Oh, God. <laughs> maybe this was MASH. <laughs> came on. <laughs> Kid knew it was time to turn the television off when the giant anime dick showed up. Well, um, I have to say that the trailer looked pretty terrible. The Not trailer really. looked terrible. I think we should have watched the anime trailer also, <laughs> like in conjunction. Yeah, we should have synced up some more, like, the Samuel inside. trailer with the audio from the. That sounds like a good project for us to work on. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, basically the tentacle with Samuel's voice. <laughs> yes. The original idea we had for this. Yeah, this does seem like the kind of role where originally when I saw that trailer, um, I thought Samuel Jackson was kind of playing the Nick Fury uh, type of 
character, mm-hmm. the kind of hipper Alfred to her Batman, but there's a lot more of a creepy factor there um, at this point. Well, it's also likely <laughs> that he has no idea where this movie came from. They just sent him a script, and he's like, yeah. yep, I got you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's very, like, I don't know. Well, we don't Maybe know. Maybe he's a huge fan of this, <laughs> so who knows? He felt he, restrained the entire movie. Like, <laughs> For how we know, he could have written the script. Like, <laughs> like, he knew what he was supposed to be getting into, and he's wondering why all this shit didn't happen. He knew what he signed up for. Yeah, I, f- I feel like him in movies is starting to become, like, if you think about being in a band and, like, you you had one hit that was good, that everybody loved, you have to play that hit like 20 years later. I feel like him saying motherfucker has become like that where it's just like so tired. But Did I do that? Yeah, there's all these people that are like, oh, I'm going to go pay $12 just so I can hear Samuel L. Jackson say motherfucker in this movie. <laughs> it's, it's just a weird like, I don't know, I'm sure he's got to be tired of it. Well, I was trying to figure out like what kind of vibe this movie would have. The director, uh, Ralph Zimmerman. Uh, the last movie he directed was Gangster's Paradise, Jerusalem. And before that, Wait, what? The Zookeeper. So I have no idea where this movie's going. Is is Gangster's Paradise, Jerusalem, the one with Weird Al? <laughs> it might be. It there's, sound, there's, sound like there's two clowns on the front trying to look real hard. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to go watch whatever the fuck that is. A young hoodlum's rise from a small cri- small time crime. Wow. <laughs> Even the synopsis has spelling errors in it. That's a good sign. A young hoodlum's rise from a small time criminal to a powerful crime entrepreneur during the turbulent years before and after the fall of apartheid. Could be a pretty solid movie. Yeah, sounds... Oh shit, it's actually got 7.8 out of 10 stars. Way That's more than more any other than, Samuel yeah. Jackson movie we're doing tonight <laughs> while we're talking shit about it. Um, so I've got some pretty awesome uh, YouTube comments if you guys want me to, to jump into that section. Definitely, especially yeah. with this knowledge we have about the source material. Okay, so, so Nesher 1972 says, Samuel L. Jackson? Question mark? Fuck the movie. He's a good actor, don't get me wrong. <laughs> so his whole argument is, it's fuck, fuck the movie because Samuel L. Jackson's in it. But he's a good actor, he's, he's don't get him wrong. Like, he's a good but actor. But it's a, the whole reason to say fuck this movie. <laughs> uh, Richard Maxwell said, they pull out the color card to attack black. Bum, bum, bum. There it goes. We knew that was coming. <laughs> what? <laughs> he says... They pull out a color something? card to attack blacks. I'm it's guessing it's referencing something, or this guy might just be insane. Maybe that. Is I think he's talking about how. Is he talking about another YouTube comment? No, no. This was. I don't ever get the like <laughs> sub comments. I if I just pull them out of context, <laughs> people would sound even crazier than they do normally. I so, think maybe he means some of the social repercussions of this movie, because obviously everyone in the anime was. White, because <laughs> yeah, anime. Got you. But now Samuel L. plays the black character, so they're obviously attacking blacks because Samuel L. plays a character. Oh, okay. Yeah, that maybe. Makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I have no idea. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> 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 but I guess that that might be what he's talking about. I think they did a pretty accurate job. We don't know what character Samuel L. plays in the anime, so we don't know what he's talking about. Well, <laughs> the chick who plays Kite, her name, or Swana, Sawana, Sawa, Sawa, is India Isley, and she was born in 1993. Oh, shit. She's the one that plays, like, the main chick The or main whatever, chick that's pissed which off. Which seems pretty accurate from the Kite anime. That's true. So maybe in the anime, like, and this is, what the anime must have come out, like, in the 80s or some shit, right? Because all of them did? Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so Samuel, so Samuel's character he's portraying probably act exactly like him before Samuel acted like him. Okay. Just some really angry, horribly so Samuel black ripped drawn off character. his like whole thing. Yeah, his whole persona. Yeah, I got, I got one more. So Blue Aniro says, "Well, I just watched the original anime, and I have things to say first. 
Why did she get raped by the old dude while her boyfriend was forced to watch? Whoa. Why did she or didn't did she? Did she? And second, She's this the... doesn't really look like it follows the anime that well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's, is he asking that question about the anime or He's the asking movie? a question about the anime, and then it's just kind of like, eh, you know... <laughs> Look, it follows it all that much. So, his complaint is that it's missing a rape scene? <laughs> That's what I got from it. So, apparently the source material is pretty fucked up. And the movie is pretty tame. But if the source material is that fucked up, what do people expect out of a Hollywood movie? A PG-13 movie? Probably more. They just wanted more out of their movies. Especially one that went... This one went direct... Oh, right. Yeah, this one's the one that went direct to It went direct, direct to TV. TV, but it didn't have enough <laughs> letters to finish that, so it went direct TV. Direct TV. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even that it reached all of TV. No, just, <laughs> just several channels, direct TV controls. Oh, man. And all of them, like, 3 a.m. in between the uh, College Girls Going Wild videos. <laughs> they, they showed this. <laughs> This was a commercial Somebody's in like between drunk. those. They're like, oh, I bet that's a Samuel L. movie, man. <laughs> Gotta check this out. Well, maybe we'll have better luck with the next movie, although there's a lot less rape and a lot less anime. <laughs> yeah, uh, I might talk about being present. Rape is just not a great thing to dwell on. Let's move on. Yeah. So we're at the end of Kite, so we have to do original doubt all over. Yeah. Cool, cool. Kite, right, Ripley, go on. So, going to watch this movie. Going to watch Kite. Kite. <laughs> Am I going to watch it? Yeah. I, I don't think we can. It's. Direct TV? Direct. Yeah, Direct TV, Direct TV, or whatever. So you don't have Direct TV? I thought that was like the standard for the Covington Conyers area. I don't. I have. I think I have a dish on my roof um, from some previous lifetime, uh, but I don't pay for it. So. Oh. Okay. I think that's the only way they hook it up. You're a pirate. You're no. A direct TV pirate. No, no. They're, Is they, that what you're saying? They just direct left the dish. It's their dish. Come get it, Direct TV. <laughs> Nick Maybe he'll about stop about watching all these movies for free. <laughs> no, that no. you're funding. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm Taking not. food out of Direct TV's employees' mouths. <laughs> and, he, and even so, he still won't watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. He won't even take the food out of their mouths now. He's too good for that. You wouldn't download a dish, would you? Um, yeah, I wouldn't watch this if someone paid me, actually. Yeah, I'm not going to. I mean... I, I, I mean, she, she wears a lot of wigs, though. Okay. Yeah. I like bright colors. Okay. <laughs> That's a good non sequitur. I'm, I'm not going to watch this movie, and I'm going to give it three brightly colored preteens out of ten. Okay. I'm going to give it three slutty wigs too slutty for someone of her age to be wearing out of ten. I'll give it one motherfucker out of ten because it looks really shitty and if it went direct to TV direct TV <laughs> direct TV direct TV at least yeah, one mother was fucked because there is that gr- she is not moving stop <laughs> so her, her mom stop she had a mom then in that case everything <laughs> in that case Samuel L is life the L in Samuel L stands for life because everyone who is a daughter or a son their mother was fucked yeah I think we just discovered the, the meaning of life <laughs> yeah. yes the secret of Samuel the L Samuel Life Jackson alright well speaking of the meaning of life and death the next movie coming up is The Samaritan, a 2014 thriller, or 2012, starring Samuel Jackson, directed by David Weaver, 
whose previous films include Close Encounters, a TV series, and Curious and Unusual Deaths, also a TV series. Uh, we're just changing the order now, and the intro doesn't mean anything. Okay, oh, that's the merit. Avery's flying off the handle here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Is that we what can go with the Samaritan. It is fine. I guess we have to now. Yeah, you, you it's, said we it's would. Spoken. So, <laughs> so let's let's hear about the Samaritan. What's the <laughs> synopsis? Synopsis is: After twenty years in prison, Foley, played by to Samuel life. life Jackson, there it is. <laughs> is finished, to life. <laughs> is finished with the grifter's life. Grift. Grift. When he meets Iris. An elusive young woman. The possibility of a new start looks real. Elusive means 14 as well in this <laughs> movie trailer. But his past has proven to be a stubborn companion. Oh, Grifton, them youngins. Yeah, so Grifton is like the least threatening sounding crime. <laughs> it sounds like they worked part time at like at like Target during the Christmas times to wrap gifts. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to grift down at Target for a few weeks around Christmas. And Part-time grifter. Part-time I'm pretty grifter. sure the grifter is uh, that character on Sesame Street, right? <laughs> the one that lives in the tra- trash can. Yeah, he wears he a red, for a lin- red a bandana on his face. Oh, and... yeah, his name is Oscar the Grift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And he's like, I'm over here grifting, big bird. Just grift? leave me alone. <laughs> What's going on? I can't Oscar? change my ways anymore. <laughs> I was the best grifter back in my day. I'm days. serving 20 in this can. <laughs> that's not what he sounds like. No, that's that's it. You okay. nailed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, your your impressions are always spot on. I'm glad he always has to impersonate the exact same sounding character. Yeah, but he, he gets lucky every time. <laughs> you guys, awesome. you guys. <laughs> so, um, I actually, actually grifting apparently means to. Well, before you go there. Okay. I love how the trailer assumes everyone who sees the trailer knows what yeah. grifting means because they're all like, "You were a grifter. I heard you did some crazy grifts back in the day." And he's like, "I got a grift I'm planning." And he's like, "I don't want to hear about no grifts." <laughs> no, it's, it's just like if know. you don't know what that means. I mean, I knew what it meant, but if you don't know what it means, <laughs> you're probably like watching the trailer and being like, "What are they talking well, about?" Well, especially if you were really confused like me and you thought it was like Fast and Furious Tokyo Grift. <laughs> <laughs> So this made like, one. Yeah, it's the best one. But this one made like zero sense to me because it was like I don't think they were. Why do they keep talking either. about whipping the car into a turn? I don't understand. Yeah. Well, the last movie we talked about that was the exact opposite of this was Demonic, where they explain every term that they ever said. <laughs> it's true. The and this one, they kind of introduce you to a word the way you want to be introduced to the word. They say it a bunch of times, and they give it to you in context. And then by the end of the trailer, you're like, Oh, I know what grifting is. And so, a they, lot like Oscar the Grouch would. Yes. Like Sesame Street. <laughs> okay. Amazing. This trailer is brought to you by G. The letter, <laughs> the letter G. G. G is for grifting. grifting. <laughs> well, at some point in the trailer, they're like, uh, it's not about the grift. It's not just about stealing money. It's about gaining their trust. So, in my mind, grifting is like the long play on taking someone's cash. Well, I think everybody in this trailer was grifted at some point in this trailer. Like if duped, you watched it, duped out of there. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like everybody thought they were sense. grifting each other. It seems like even the guy who was getting the money stolen from him was like, "You thought I wouldn't notice that I lost that <laughs> much money? The joke's on you!" Like everybody had that like better than thou. Grifters got a drift. Grift. <laughs> grift. They got a drift. drift. Yeah. Grift. So grifting a, sounds a lot like marriage. <laughs> it just. <laughs> Based on the way you guys are describing it now. Yeah. Do you, okay. Eli, <laughs> grift this bitch? <laughs> I do. I, I do, do grift her. I trust. And yeah. she's smiling because you're secretly being grifted. <laughs> That's why you have to sign a pre-grip. A pre-grift. <laughs> oh, shit. I think when we decided to do this podcast, we grifted ourselves into <laughs> believing it was going to be amazing. And then it's gone downhill every day. <laughs> I meant this episode specifically. I, okay. You're crushing like the rest of what I thought about <laughs> the other episodes. <laughs> so this movie's got Samuel in it, obviously. Um, Clearly. It also has Luke Kirby, who plays Ethan, and Ruth Nega, who plays Iris. What was her name? Ruth Nega. Ruta Bega? Ruth Nega. Plays Iris. Ruth Nega was born in 1982. 
in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Okay. She is an actress known for World War Z, The Samaritan, and Breakfast on Pluto. And a controversial last name. And a controversial last name. <laughs> and a last name that two people on this podcast will not even attempt to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it turns out when they asked her what Ruth Nega thought of this film, she said Samaritan was basically World War Z for grifters. <laughs> So basically, they're faster. Yeah, it's just they a climb city on overrun other, with grifters. And, and, yeah, you can catch the grifting very quickly. It's obviously very contagious. <laughs> so the the trailer actually is kind of like exciting as it has to be because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of substance for the story to. It didn't look bad. So I before I don't want to skip ahead, but are you planning on watching this movie ever? Yeah. No, okay, because it like reading all the YouTube comments gave me some insights and in, as to what happens. No, I'm pretty sure uh, there's a couple grifts, a couple layers to the grift, right? There's some grifting happening. Yeah, there's some twists. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, but you were asking, are we gonna watch this movie? Like the YouTube comments might spoil the actual movie for us. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that they, they did. Do they watch? They did. Not the ones I put up, but I. All right, man. I'm gonna go out and let me say, even them having watched the movie. Their reviews won't be as accurate as our predictions. That's a valid point. <laughs> but it really... <laughs> and a lot of them were complaining. Touché. Basically, a lot of them were saying the same thing. Like, yeah, you, you showed us the whole movie in the trailer. So mm. so a couple of people that actually watched the movie came through and presented a couple of twists that they uh, mm. didn't show in the trailer. They're like, no, they didn't because you got grifted by this trailer. And one of them actually might be more fucked up than the anime thing. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, okay, that sounds like a challenge. I think we should do our predictions before you get into the YouTube. <laughs> okay, that's comments. a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't predict based on that one twist. <laughs> I think I know. I think I know what it is. Okay. All right, let's see. Double grift. <laughs> Can you grift this ending? Okay, so. <laughs> grift us, do. I think the ultimate grift. Mm hmm. Is that the girl, the elusive girl, mm-hmm. um, that was in the trailer? Yeah, yeah. That like is also friends with the white grifter, mm. and also an illegitimate grandkid of Samuel Jackson, grifted. <laughs> so he grifted a get grandkid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she was a grift from God. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're saying that he slept with his own granddaughter? Yeah. Okay. That sounds about worse than the other movie. He grifted that booty. Yeah. All right. A- Avery, uh, what, what's your prediction? Just for the fucked up. Uh, sure. The thing fucked up element. The fucked up <laughs> The twist. Yeah. Oh, um, no. This might and, prove and it's inaccurate. There, there may be more, but the, the whole... Um, was well, not going to prove it's inaccurate because I'm actually going to reveal it and then we'll predict it. So <laughs> <laughs> we do get a redo. We, we win. Okay. We win this one. Uh, I'm going to say that <laughs> they brought Samuel in because he killed this guy's father, right? So the son brings him in to do this one last grift, and he totally missed chick hostage uh, because she's in on it too, right? She's right. pretending to be held hostage. So he'll find out later that she's not actually being held hostage. And uh, he's probably going to brutally hug her a lot. Um, <laughs> Calm down, buddy. Which, <laughs> this has got to go on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. I mean, that's All what right. the hugging do. Um, and then he's finally going to like get in contact with this dude whose sons he killed, where he'll be like tied up and bound or something. And the guy's going to like just... This is worse than just, the script. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute worst Oz scene you, you can imagine worst. where... Okay. The guy gets released from prison and he walks away and he goes home scot free. Okay. Um, and then probably in the very end, there's this big bloody scene of just like people putting on band aids because they walk through a sticker bush. And and you call that the aristocrats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be a pretty tame ending, which is really controversial. So, so Stu is actually almost dead on. What? Accurate. <laughs> but it's his daughter. Oh, come on. Hollywood. We all know Samuel L. Jackson's real age. We can blame that one on the suits. 
Yeah, you can. So yeah, that that's how he gets, <laughs> he gets grifted into sleeping with. Which I don't see how you benefit from that. But the guy's pissed off because he killed his dad. So that's yeah. the whole thing. So. Yeah, so he grifted him. You get all that from the. Trailer. I don't know where the if, money. If you involved, actually go and watch the I was trailer, assuming money had to do with grifting, like you're financially making money off of it. Yeah, I thought that would have Sometimes it's about more than company. money. Sometimes it's about trust. <laughs> Sometimes it's about getting a man to sleep with his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and and Samuel says in the mo- in the trailer he's like I learned some pretty nasty things in prison. Oh, yeah. I bet he showed his daughter. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> when he brutally hugged her. So um, I'll I'll read a couple of YouTube comments and then we can uh, go back. Man, down I wish I was on YouTube because then I would be like I knew that from the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. So uh, Tuni Tuniji Sweden says. Yeah, good job, fucking idiot. But he spells idiot, I D I E T. <laughs> Showing the whole fucking Classic. movie, idiots. So he spells it again. Exactly caps, the same. Way. Exactly the same nice. with a bunch of asses on the Reiteration. Game. He's proved that he doesn't know how to spell he or she. And then Tuber Yube says, I came here thanks to my PC slash Mac. <laughs> Tuber Yube? <laughs> So, <laughs> whatever device he's using. He's, he's not sure, but he, he knows that one of those two got him here. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> he's learning the English language. He's getting out there. He's making comments. Mm, he's good, yeah. good on him. One step at a time. Did he, was he the one that predicted the end of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was stupid. P.S. Yes, not everything was in the trailer. Oh, You're the right. idiot. Idiot. I guess if you look closely enough. You would realize that that's exactly what was going on in the movie. Yeah, if you look closely enough at the trailer, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, once I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, I can see that all day. But mm. on first watching the trailer, it didn't... I mean, I'm not as fucked up as Stu, so it didn't occur to me. I just thought she was unnaturally young. Like, yeah. unusually young for a man of his age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're fucked up. So, you know. if you think about it... <laughs> The her, Ruth Nega is the character who plays the daughter, right? Um, if you think about it, her name is I Iris. I don't think about so, it. So, like Iris is like you look, you're looking for the thing. What are you? <laughs> Ruth. That name means like a feeling of pity and distress and grief. <laughs> That's true. And her last name Nega. <laughs> it's like Samuel Jackson is going to regret. Sleeping with this chick named Ruth who plays Iris. Okay, so this is the movie trailer podcast, not the horoscope <laughs> you podcast. <laughs> you broke open, wide open, when they cast her for the role. Exactly. This they, this was written for her. This is probably like her backstory or whatever. <laughs> so she's actually sending her little daughter in real life that he fucked. What? <laughs> I'll be. Okay, yeah. So this is a documentary. <laughs> yes, it's a British documentary made about Samuel Jackson's life and his family. Okay. And he pulled the ultimate grift on the American audience Yeah, by becoming an actor. Did he? Or did he not even know that this movie was about his life? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean all of his other movies. Oh, and yeah. And this is his confession. Yeah, this basically. is yeah. his usher. He got our trust. Confessions. Yeah. All right, um, I'm going to give this... Five what the fucks out of ten. <laughs> I'm gonna give this one daughter. One daughter. One daughter. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna give this daughter's worth. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't elaborate. Full blooded. No, no. <laughs> you cut off. You said your piece. Now it's my turn to give my rating. With the blood of the no, family. No, no, no. You're all done. Disgrace no, in the name. No. I, I give this one eight daughter fuckers out of ten. <laughs> I mean, come on. Sorry, that was, that was a little hanging fruit, but I had, yeah, to, I had to take it. You get, Neither of you took it, surprisingly. So. Well, you know. <laughs> it was oh, It was classless and tasteless. Okay, I understand. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it's not that we didn't see the dangling fruit. It's just <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just let the fruit slide. Okay. Man. Okay. Why? Well, I, I cleaned up. Okay. I took one for the team. <laughs> All right. Speaking of shit, I fucker. The next movie, Reasonable Doubt, 
came out in 2014, stars Samuel Jackson and Dominic Cooper, who plays Mitch Brockton. So Mitch Brockton feels like he should be like a porn star. That sounds like an awesome name. <laughs> or Sylvester Stallone or Yeah, like something badass but Steven Seagal. This guy just looks like, like an eighties. Like I don't know. The guy that plays him looks kind of like a douchebag. Dominic. But um so the the premise is up and coming district attorney Mitch Brockton commits a fatal hit and run and feels compelled to throw the case against the accused criminal found with the body and blame for the crime. So deep. So he throws the case that they have against this guy. After the trial, Mitch's worst fears come true when he realizes that he acquitted a guilty man. And he soon soon finds himself on the hunt for the killer before more victims pile up. Mm -hmm. So this is another one where by the end of the trailer they... Uh, You you pretty much know everything. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one reveal from the YouTube comments. That it's not even that interesting. Like if you watch the trailer, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that definitely happens." Mm. Well, you wouldn't realize that Mitch Brockman is his daughter because he looks like oh, a man. <laughs> <laughs> and Stute, this, Stute, and he's Stute. played Stute. by a male actor. <laughs> That's <laughs> not all of them. A little more of a twist in that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Samuel Jackson just like goes to town on all these actresses. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know Avery usually comes forth with the interesting tidbits. This um, has a 13 on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, which, you know, I don't know. Out of 100. Got, yeah, just to clarify, not out of 14. It's actually got a 5.7 out of 14. 10 on IMDb. IMDb. So maybe it's one of those things where well, IMDb is making shit up. As we know from previous <laughs> podcasts, I don't trust Google because they're just controlling it and they do. and don't even yeah. look at Bing. Did you Bing that answer? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You're right. I don't, I don't even Did know you why. Bing that rating? I don't even know why I bother. <laughs> you know, Samuel L is controlling all the Googles. There's there's no reason <laughs> to even bother. There's not even a reason. Um, random fact about Samuel Jackson before it we is. get it pretty is. deep into this. Quentin Tarantino wrote the popular role of Jules Winfield in Pulp Fiction specifically for Jackson. That was before he got... That was what kind of propelled him into stardom, right? Yeah, because other fact that we don't all know, I guess we all know it now, is it wasn't until Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction in 1994, when he was 46 years old, that Samuel Jackson actually stepped out into the front limelight, started getting all his recognition. So I guess he owes his entire career to Quentin Tarantino. Wow. It's what that comes down to. Also, he's a vegetarian. Weird shit. Nobody told his daughter that. Cause, oh, oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> also, he All right, good so, for a 67-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that no too. Kidding. Math. So there, there's a few things in this trailer that I that I picked up on that I really... <laughs> Stu's good at math. He's good at math. That I, that I really wanted to point out. Um, one is, I don't know that I've ever seen Samuel play a, a psychopath as it was written in the script. <laughs> I think he's always given a script for a normal person and then he plays a psychopath. Yeah. And this one he's actually playing a psychopath playing a psychopath. Is that why it did so poor? Pretty convincing. He wasn't believable. Yeah. They're like, I want you to play a psychopath. He's like, should I use this voice? Should I just be normal? They're like, no man, be yourself. When you said psychopath, you mean like a little different than my usual self? Yeah, I, th- I think that's what happened. Is that, yeah, they were like, uh, "Can you can you give us like, uh, psycho?" <laughs> and he's like, um, "Yeah." No, he did I his can't. best Fox News correspondent impersonation. Yeah. He actually does do an amazing white voice, white person <laughs> voice impersonation yes. in the movie. He does, and this is one of my predictions: is that that's actually his real voice, <laughs> and he just he got trapped into using the motherfucker like voice by yeah. accident and then he's now just he has to do that all the time so all over that he probably owes that to Quentin Tarantino also <laughs> it's like motherfuck <laughs> no Samuel let's make it a little more black if we can, can do that can we think um I wrote, urban I wrote this character <laughs> a specific way for you <laughs> it needs you to be a little more in there I just want to go back to playing chess like can we wrap this up I gotta go pick my daughter up from school. Um, 
<laughs> no more daughter references to the from... fucking rest of the podcast. You guys are banned. Both of you. So what was your... <laughs> What was your tagline for this movie, dude? Uh, the Samaritan. It's right there in the title. This isn't the good one. Good Sorry, point. that's not that's it. That's the wrong one. We're yeah. talking about Reasonable Doubt. Yep. All right. Uh, reasonable Doubt. This will surely put his career through an unreasonable drought. Okay. A reasonable drought. <laughs> so this if you didn't catch that. A rando on YouTube, I think, outdid you by accident. No. Yeah. (laughs) So let me read it. So Floristine Grady says, too many reasons, not enough doubt. He just puts it out there, cuts to the chase. And that's that's what a tagline is all about. I don't know this, like, wordy (laughs) shit that you're bringing to the table. The actual tagline for the movie? Proof is the burden Okay, so Stu and this guy are better. (laughs) So, proof is the burden? What the fuck? Okay, Stu, I can't ever say anything about your taglines again. Yeah, I feel like that was like Stu vindication. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, But also, mine's better. Okay. Reasonable doubt. That was a great great counter-argument. I have a good (laughs) curveball. Like, so I have a curveball approach when it comes to these taglines. Explain, please. It's not going to be you're straight down the middle. I don't know what else I have to say. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's play It's not wide. a floater. Why you uh, it's not a change up. Was a curveball. It's ball. a curveball. That's, that's the most that Stu has ever talked about sports in his whole life. All right. Well, thanks for explaining that to us, Stu Irked. It's not a fastball. Um, one, of the, the ter- <laughs> one of the reasons I know that this has to be a bad movie, like, Rotten Tomatoes is saying is uh, mm-hmm. one of the lines that Samuel has in this trailer is so cheesy and just like cringe worthy. It's it's pretty rough when he like yells at the guy and he's like, <laughs> "Fill my emptiness," <laughs> and uh, fill it. I don't well, or say, feel I don't, it. I don't know. Feel oh, that's so much deeper than I thought. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a it's a play on words. And none of you can say the word daughter for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> a lot to think about there. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a pretty cheesy... Feel it. <laughs> Feel it. Feel my emptiness. Her <laughs> emptiness. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Stuart. I stop. learned some pretty nasty things in prison. <laughs> Feel my emptiness. Oh, my God. Again, I think this is just a recycled line from Kite. Yeah, um, I feel like these are all just like intermingled at this point. Oh, we should also mention before we get too off course that yeah. uh, Dominic Cooper, who pl- actually plays the lead role in this film, mm-hmm. uh, plays a character named Dino Brewster in Need for Speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They call him that because he likes the... Um... <laughs> okay. Is there dinosaur ice cream? I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know either. Well, how, well basically, I, if there was a dinosaur flavored ice cream at mm-hmm. Brewster's, that would have been a great joke. But okay, I thought you were going to say he liked Punky Brewster in the eighties. No, nah, that was. See, <laughs> I need to get that curveball. Okay, uh, that would have been, been better. That would have been better. We were talking about how stupid that name was. Um, in this movie, also Aaron Paul from um, Breaking Bad. Is in this movie? No, no he was he's in, in Need for Speed. Need for Speed. Oh. Yeah. He yeah. plays Toby Marshall. He's talking about Need for Speed now. Well, I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on the last movie. We're just talking about ridiculous names from Need for Speed. <laughs> I feel like if if you like... And that was his first big role, like Dino Brewster, right? Mm-hmm. Before that, he played like as local guy at McDonald's, because that's what he was actually doing. Or yeah. So I feel like you go to your parents and you're like, Mom, Dad, like I finally made it. Like, you know, I got a... Big movie, it's got a big budget, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad's in it. They're like, that's awesome, like, what's your name? And you have to be like, oh, it's a Dino Brewster. <laughs> and then they go and tell their friends, and yeah, that yeah. just seems like it would be... You were saying earlier, like, they continually confuse it with uh, Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. <laughs> Telling everybody yeah, parents are like, Fast yeah, and he's in Fast and Furious. Oh, yeah, which one? Just the one, you know? It's like, uh... <laughs> yeah. I think, it's I think my son is in the Flintstones reboot. <laughs> I'm Fast, not sure. Fast and Furious, Need for Speed, that one. <laughs> the obvi. No, I think that it's likely that Need for Speed was a porn parody of Fast and the Furious. 
Look at uh, Dino yeah. Brewster. Dino, yeah. Some of the other names: Julia Madon, Joe Peck, <laughs> Little Pete, Joe Peck, and the Monarch. Those are actual it's names. That I someone, heard that Joe. These are the character names from Need for Speed. <laughs> what? <laughs> I heard that Joe Pex had a little Pete. There you go. <laughs> oh, and then there's a guy whose name is Wright Cedar, flying Hawaiian. Is he a tree supremacist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We should have been reviewing Need for Speed. Apparently, as I was like, we'll need to go yeah, back we'll to that. We'll put it for one. the next one. <laughs> We really will. Wow. I just so you guys read haven't the... seen Need for Speed? So oh, you have? No. Oh, I haven't seen But you haven't seen, seen Reasonable it. Doubt. You haven't seen any Dino we could Brewster do a, movies? We could do a <laughs> racing <laughs> thing, oh, too. We should. Um, but I guess while we're doing this one, we can finish it. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just you, segue. We could just read the cast <laughs> names for the next 20 minutes. I would be happy. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So you guys um, have any predictions about... Uh... I do. Um, so this is where I'm going to go. Samuel Jackson's character, uh, Clinton Davis, actually set up this entire hit and run thing in order to, like, it's kind of his way of getting back at Mitch Brockton. Okay. It's like he's actually grifting him. And, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> We're going to find out that that kid that got hit was actually his daughter. <laughs> oh, they got hit by the car. Damn it. <laughs> what did I just tell you? Um, he set the whole thing up because after he realized what he'd done, he just couldn't live with himself. And by himself, he meant with her existing on the planet. Okay. And so he yeah. set her up to be hit by a car. All right. This is actually like the sequel to The Samaritan. Jesus. Um, Stu, please. <laughs> All right. Um, so, my interesting, interesting point while watching this trailer is that uh, they both seem like assholes, and I wasn't really, really rooting for either one of them. Uh, I don't know if there is a protagonist or an antagonist, or if there's just a couple antagonists because they're both just kind of dicks. Yeah, I think the third antagonist would be the writer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. <laughs> I think uh, everybody's going to get their due. Okay. And I think uh, at the end of the movie, it's going to do a close-up on a six-year-old girl. Oh, my God. And okay. she's going right, to be a reasonable doubter. She's going to be a reasonable doubter. Wrap it up. A reasonable doubter. Stop. Speaking of the main character. Speaking of the writer, before we get to Eli's. So just like so I throw my daughter shit in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter Dowling wrote this. His last films that he actually helped write was Sacrifice and Stagnite. Not stagnant, but like stagnite. Like a like, night of stags. Like, like stagnite. Like the gross on caves mixed with stagnant? Stalactite. Like stag, like a horse? Don't they call a horse stags? Stalactite. Stalactite. They don't call know, horses. I feel like we're sounding really fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry we don't know enough porn parody horse names. <laughs> this shit. It's the one thing I thought I would never come short on. And last but not least, Raggy Doll, which is probably a reference to the daughter. Okay. Right. In your predictions, Seriously. Sir. <laughs> yeah. And I don't feel like you can touch daughters whatsoever. In your yeah, I feel like prediction. that would just be fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Unless you didn't know and someone grifted you into doing it. So I think I think everyone dies at the end. Okay. Including the uh, wife and the Well how else baby. can how else can they make like you Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, both. And only death and the uh, and nothing genderless else. infant. <laughs> yes, nothing else but death. Only death. Okay. Okay. Just because there's it based on what you were saying, so I agree with you, there's nothing redeemable about the you're not like, oh yeah, this guy. Yeah, who are you I rooting can't... for? Yeah, you're... if like one guy's arm gets blown off and the other guy's leg gets cut, you're just and they're mad. both injured and they're fighting each other, you're like, who yeah. like, what do I care? Yeah, I I agree. So that, I think that the only way to, well, then maybe part of the reason that the movie, generally when everyone dies at the end of a movie, America hates it, mm-hmm. even if they set it up like this where there's no one redeemable, they still hate it. Yeah, audiences hate that. So I think the rating and how poorly it did are kind of reflective. Well, you say it did like poorly, that. but it actually made in IMDb's 
top 5,000 movies. <laughs> I'm not even sure why that's a metric. But top 5,000 movies of the week that it came out. <laughs> but who owns IMDb, though? Uh, Are Google. you saying it's Samuel? No, I'm it's just, Google. I'm just not sure. Is it Google? And we know, Is it Google? We know they're controlling all the Googles. Well, let's see what Bing rates this movie. <laughs> So I'll, I'll jump into YouTube comments while you go to Bing. It'll sure. take it'll take a while to load. I'm yeah, sure, so. it's still loading. So the darkness twenty four eight seven says, my guess is this takes. I'm gonna read this with a southern accent. My guess is this takes place in New York. In any of the southern states, the wife would have had her concealed carry license and probably carry a gun on her in the house. <laughs> concealed of course, then, carry. <laughs> when she shoots and kills a psychopath, there wouldn't be much of there a movie. There wouldn't be much of a story there then. Much of a movie, the movie there? would be over pretty quick. <laughs> it's a five minute film. Nobody wants to Good luck writing that film. screenplay. Good luck with that. Maybe you should set it in New York. Got a problem over there? <laughs> Don't carry any guns in New York. I don't see anyone shooting anybody up there in New York. Nope. Nope. Ain't no concealing carry. <laughs> um, so Mac Butterfly comes in with some really solid good. legal advice. Mac Butterfly? Meg Butterfly. <laughs> Meg Butterfly? <laughs> and says, and this is exactly why involved in a hit and run, you should fess up early, not leave the scene. <laughs> Sounds like personal experience. Because <laughs> Samuel Jackson is <laughs> going to murder your whole fucking family. <laughs> Wrongly convicted or not, and then Lee, Lee Key had my favorite comment of the, the podcast, which was, another British asshole is in this movie? I can't believe it. He must be talking what? about fucking Dino. <laughs> another one? <laughs> another British asshole. How many were there? They're, just, they're in movies <laughs> everywhere, man. They're taking our jobs. I thought he was saying they're in this one yeah, movie. Yeah, this one particular movie. Like, he watched this trailer four <laughs> times and keeps seeing new British assholes in it. <laughs> How many did I they have to it, cast into this film? I took it to mean that he watched like 30 trailers and there was like a British guy. That probably all. makes more sense. I don't know. He had a, he no, just no, had a, really he had a really bad night when he was trailering it up. What does he up. have against, against British people like, that they can't be in movies? They're convincing American accents <laughs> Damn are them. getting them casted. I bet, he hates, <laughs> he, I bet he hates House so much. Oh, we can't even understand He probably doesn't him. even know. It's yeah. probably like his favorite <laughs> actor. That's my favorite show. We his should just friend. let him go on like this he for a few more know. years. And it will drop that on him. There's definitely some <laughs> deeply rooted British actor that he doesn't realize that he loves. Yeah. Does he not know Samuel L. is British? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably the one that's sleeping with his daughter. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this is probably why he freaking hates the damn bricks. Oh my God. Um, I'm going to give this two reasonable doubts out of... <laughs> 12. Yeah, I'm not sure I was 100% convinced to convict this movie. I mean, none of us are going to none of us are going to watch this, right? No. Are you sure? This is the out of all three that we I wasn't going to watch. Yeah. <laughs> this, this one I'm least? most definitely not wow. going to watch. That's Have you guys considered and let's think about this for a moment. And this one wasn't straight to direct TV. Let's do a thought exercise before <laughs> Eli comes on and says he's not going to watch this either. <laughs> Just think about it. Reasonable Doubt, The Samaritan, Kite. We watched all three in one sitting, but we watched 20 minutes of one and then 20 minutes of the next, and we just blur them all together. Yeah. And I mean, we're blurring amazing. the trailers together. <laughs> <laughs> we can get the experience our listeners are getting right now, probably. <laughs> Probably. So, with that in mind, do you intend to watch this movie? If we watch it under those circumstances that you just described, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think I would ever watch this. Even if I was drunk and there, like the TV was broken. Challenge yourself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not that hard of a challenge, really. But uh, I give this one... I give it two burden of proof. It's a burden. <laughs> burden. Proof is a burden. Proof is a burden. <laughs> Proof is a burden. That's the worst tagline. Oh, God. <laughs> Order in court. 
Wonder, there will be order. I wonder what the the taglines that got rejected were. <laughs> think about you know sustained. What? I don't feel like we'd be doing right if he, I he if fucked I his own daughter. Oh wait, that's the wrong movie. My bad. <laughs> Tagline: Sometimes your daughter. Do- oh, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna uh, read the taglines for the previous two movies. Please do. I, I think like we I need to start should. doing that shit. You guys are really gonna like me after this shit. <laughs> Kite, based on a groundbreaking anime, breaking with a an apostrophe. That's how you know it's legit. Groundbreaking. Based on a groundbreaking anime. What? Yeah, that's a weird tagline. That is it. And also, especially when they we saw the images diverged from the anime Ooh. for obvious reasons. I'm saying, why are they doing the apostrophe instead of the G? For one. <laughs> And two, maybe not groundbreaking is the proper term <laughs> based on what happened in the anime. But what's the main character's name? Is it ground? We don't know. I don't know. It could <laughs> have been that tagline was mistranslated. <laughs> <laughs> based on the ass-breaking anime. The Samaritan. The pound-breaking. You've got to know a secret to tell a secret. What the <laughs> fuck? I give up. You have to know one to know one. Stu. To tell one. Stu, I apologize for all of the shit I've we talked should, about. You can go back lines. and read all the On behalf of all really the previous should. episodes. Now yeah. we have to include all the taglines every time to compare them to Stu. <laughs> so good. Yeah, you're not allowed to ever look them up. I never do. So. No, he never does. I, no. But now, that'll just be part of what we there's include. a possibility but now that I, somebody will look it up and compare. But I feel like now, though... You're just going to be cocky and <laughs> <laughs> you're not even going to try as hard anymore. I already uh, was. What's the difference? <laughs> there's going to be an episode where he gets crushed by the industry taglines and it's going to bring him down to it's, earth. It's true. <laughs> it'll have, it'll be like point. a rude awakening. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to hire like... some writers. I'm going to start paying some people and do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it could be really shady. It could, it could go some... There's a really interesting story to be told there, I think. Unbreakable <laughs> Earth. Because fuck Stu. <laughs> and that's how you'll know. It can't be the tagline. Well, it's not, it's not. Okay. Yeah. But well, it's gonna happen. It's really personal. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood will take notice. It's not like no one listens to this podcast, dude. People are gonna know. Yeah, dude. That you're going after their tagline. I know at least... That's at least three people... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't listen to it, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. Oh, shit. That's yeah. pretty impressive. That's probably the three times I listen to it, <laughs> which explains our three downloads. I was like, man, who are these other people listening to this podcast? <laughs> it's just me. It's just you downloading it over and over again. <laughs> well, only three times. Like, I can only download it three times. Did you have any more amazing Samuel Jackson facts? Um, I do. And actually, they're Samuel Factions. <laughs> this is why you're here, dude. Taglines, man. Stu coming through. They're strong. Samuel Fax sons. <laughs> no, no, no. Go with the first. All right, one. This, go this, with your first. We'll instinct. edit that out. It's all good. Yeah. Let's keep the first one. <laughs> In 1969, happened. Jackson was suspended for two years from Morehouse College and convicted of a second degree felony when he and several other students and a member of the college board held a trustee hostage in an exchange school reform. Well, trying to get his staying school reform. What? Yeah. Wait. Was that his daughter? <laughs> no, that was me. What I fucked you... that whole sentence up. Oh, okay. Jackson was suspended for two years from Warhouse College and convicted of a secondary felony when he and several other students held members of the college board of trustees hostage in exchange for school reform. There we go. Did that's, they get school reform? So that's like a, 20, a 22 year old Samuel Jackson taking over a school. It, well, that was in. Or it was it a college or a high that's school? That's already a college. That's already a better premise than the three movies we reviewed tonight. <laughs> I want to know. Like, I want so to watch more, that yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Early in his career, Jackson struggled with alcoholism and drug addiction to the extent that he was replaced in two plays when the production transitioned to a Broadway stage. Again, still a better plot. Yeah. And days after completing what rehab kind of for cocaine. I'm on the hook here, man. Cocaine. Days after oh, okay. completing rehab for cocaine, the actor starred in Spike Lee's Jungle Fever as a crack cocaine addict. Well, he was just doing research for years and years. And for three years, 
Samuel Jackson slept with an underage girl that he thought he met in a brothel. Turned out to be his daughter. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> he was grifted by Dominic. He got grifted. It turns out that British asshole his entire <laughs> His entire life story is like the most amazing plot to a movie. Yeah. He never made. And I think this is the thing. Like We look at some of these movies we're in and we're like, why are you doing this? And it's because he's like, I've already played the hardest role I'll ever play. <laughs> so now I'm just fucking around. Samuel Jackson, 2016. I also like the little hats that he wears sometimes. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, like his little like fedoras and his sometimes little, he got little uh, golfer cap? hats. Oh, little Kango. Yeah. Thanks you for that. You guys don't like him? No, that's that's great, Stu. That was a good factoid. <laughs> Thanks um, for that. Facts. Um, yeah, that was my fact. <laughs> also, sometimes he likes to wear newspaper boy hats <laughs> on talk shows. Well, um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, as always, you can check us out on Twitter at Pre Evaluators, Facebook dot com backslash Premature Evaluators, Primcast P R E M C A S T dot com. Mm-hmm. or Premature-Evaluators.com. We're trying to become more active on Twitter and Facebook and, and having conversations. I know we're, we're pretty lax about that, but uh, if you want to hit us up on there, we will respond, and if you want to give us suggestions, we'll probably ignore them <laughs> uh, after we take them into careful consideration. Mm-hmm. We're also not opposed to someone outside the podcast doing Twitter and Facebook for us, right? <laughs> Yeah. So if anyone, one of our adoring fans, would like to take over twittering for us, that'd be yeah. Amazing. If anyone thinks that they're close to as funny as we are, <laughs> yeah. which I'm, I don't know, I'm sure there's not many out there. I feel like even Almost. asking for help is a lot. Like we really want you guys to listen to the podcast. We care a lot about you, just not enough to actually tweet. Yeah. Or Facebook. I feel or like, interact with you. At I feel all. like what we're if, saying. If you guys like, could interact with each other on our behalf. <laughs> that would be amazing. I feel like we should just give out the Twitter. <laughs> To people that actually listen to the podcast. Just the login. We'll just, just give you the login. <laughs> if you're a listener Go for it. If you're a Go listener, to town. You're now the Twitter account. <laughs> what could they possibly tweet that yeah. could embarrass us? I know. After what you guys have done tonight, it's, also, it's damn near don't, impossible. Don't necessarily limit yourself to suggesting trailers. Just, you know, maybe suggest a theme for us. That's a great idea, actually. Or manage our social media. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever you guys are thinking. Uh, Show up and record a a podcast so we can take a week off. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Whatever whatever you guys feel like you want to do. We never know when we're going to record. Send an invite. Let us know what day. We should probably be all together. What time. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe you could just start organizing our thoughts. (laughs) Sending us notes. Come up with some Catchy one-liners and taglines. Yeah. No one could ever replace you on that. That's right. It's true. (laughs) Well, uh, thank you guys for listening. I hope you're having a wonderful time doing whatever it is you're doing. Uh, My name's Eli. This is Avro. And Stu. What, that's it? (laughs) No weird... It wasn't weird. Okay. Thanks. It was awkward. It was awkward. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Good night. Are good at good.